Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are looking for Christmas DIYs and inspiration, then you are definitely in the right place. Today's video is going to be jam packed with ideas. So if you are ready for some Christmas DIY, let's get started. For this project, I am going to be using Pringles cans and y'all are not even going to believe how amazing this project is going to turn out. I'm going to cut them in half using my miter saw because I have it and that was easy, but you could also cut it in half with a razor knife or something like that. I cut my can down to different lengths, but you can keep it the same, cut it right in the middle or make it different, it's whatever you want. And if you have any rough edges, just take some sandpaper and sand it down. I'm gonna hot glue the tops on just to make sure that they stay in place. Now using my drill, I'm going to put a hole in the center of each can, both the metal bottoms and the plastic tops. I wanna add some decorative trim to the top and the bottom of my canister. So I'm gonna be using the IOD Trimmings 3 Mode and IOD Air Dry Clay. I already put some cornstarch in my mold to keep the clay from sticking and then you just put the clay in and then you rub off all the excess with your fingers and then I like to kind of jiggle around the mold a little bit to help it release and then you just pull it right off. Oh, my piece did tear a little bit, but that's not a big deal. We're going to glue everything back together. And I'm just going to use some Gorilla Glue to glue my clay to my Pringles can. Now, if you are wondering what I am making, I'm going to be making some harvest bells. You want to add details and a more handmade look, but you don't have the IOD trimmings mode. You could simply just add some clay to the top and the bottom. I just rolled out a line of clay and then put it on my Pringles can and I thought it ended up giving it a very pretty handmade, almost kind of hand forged look. To give my bales that brass look, I'm going to take them and spray them with this gold metallic paint, both on the outside and on the inside. Once the spray paint is dry, I'm going to add some antiquing wax to it. So I'm going to brush this on. And since the Pringles can is a little bit slick, I'm going to let it dry on that part for a minute and then I'm just going to dab it off with my paper towel instead of wiping it off and that really gives it a very cool effect. Now if you like the gold look you could definitely skip this step but me personally I love making everything look old and antique and the antiquing wax just works so well with the IOD modes and just really makes them pop. The last step is to add some string to hang it. So I'm just gonna be using some twine and I'm going to put it through the hole that I drilled and then I'm going to just tie a few knots to keep the string from going through on the underside. And then I'm also gonna tie some knots on the top just for looks. Now I did see a lot of harvest veils that had rings and circles at the top so you could definitely add that too as well but i just decided to leave it as is and just add string to hang it I got these three different size glass vases from the thrift store and they may also be the same ones you can get from the Dollar Tree, but I'm not sure, but I wanted three different sizes and I also got three different kinds of white sweaters from the thrift store. I'm going to take the sleeve of one of the sweaters and put it on my vase to kind of see how far up I want it to go and then I am going to cut the sleeve. To keep the sweater in place, I'm gonna add hot glue around the top. Now, if your sweater is very tight, this step may not be necessary. I'm also gonna glue the sweater to the bottom of the vase, but you wanna try to do it as evenly and flat as possible. That way your vase sits level on your surface. Also, when you're doing the bottom, do not pull too hard on your sweater because you want to try to keep your sweater pattern as even as possible. I decided to use a different sweater for each vase. That way they would have a slightly different color and a different pattern. 
but they would still look like a cohesive collection since they were all covered with sweaters. This last one is my personal favorite. I just love the thick, chunky texture on this sweater. I was so excited to find these plastic ornaments at the Dollar Tree. They are the bigger size that I was looking for and the absolute perfect size for this project. I want to create some ornaments for my own tree, but I don't want them to be overly Christmassy. So I decided the IOD birdsong mold would be perfect for this project. I just dusted the mold with some cornstarch and that helps to keep it from sticking. And then I took my IOD air dry clay and pushed it into the mold and then removed the excess. And then it easily comes right out of the mold. I found that red solo cups were the perfect size for these ornaments. And now I'm going to take some Gorilla Glue and just glue my molds to my ornament. I am going to do this before it dries, that way, before the clay dries, that way my clay will form to the same curvature as my ornament. I made 15 of these just using all the different birds from the molds. And if I decided to put two birds on an ornament, I just used tape to keep it in place while the glue dried. And I let these dry overnight. Next, I'm going to be mixing baking soda and antique white paint. The recipe for this will be half baking soda and half paint. The more baking soda you use, the more textured your paint will be. It is never easy to paint around its surface, so I decided to just paint the top of the ornaments, let it dry, and then I would turn it over and paint the bottom. At first, I started painting it inside the cup and it was just hard to hold on to. So finally, I just ended up removing it and that was a lot easier. So I am painting the entire piece, even the little metal topper on here, it's all going to get a coat of this textured paint. So I painted the top and then I put it in the cup to let it dry. And then I just went on to the next one because I have 15 of these to paint. And then once it was dry, I painted the bottom and let that dry. I ended up doing two coats on everything. And it really did not take as long as I thought it was going to take. It's definitely a little bit of a labor of love. But I think in the end, you will agree it was definitely worth it. Since I did the half and half ratio, this paint is very textured. So I am just lightly going over my molds just to make them the same color as my ornament. But I don't want to go so heavy on my molds that I fill in all the details. So I just put one very light coat of paint over the birds. And I did think about putting the antiquing wax to bring out, you know, some more of the details. But in the end, I just decided I just wanted this very simple textured look. And I feel like that was the right decision for my tree. I absolutely love how these turned out and I really wanted them to be seen so I made sure to hang them a little bit towards the outside of my tree. Look at these little lovebirds how cute and the texture on these ornaments are amazing. It almost looks like pieces of pottery hanging on my tree. These ornaments are totally my style, but I feel like they could go with so many different styles of home decor. I am obsessed. Let me know what y'all think about them. This light fixture I actually just removed from the foyer in my house and I kept it because I knew I could use it for another project. The first thing I need to do is remove the electrical and take the lamp apart. If you just keep unscrewing everything, eventually the whole piece will come apart and then we're going to keep the pieces that we want. I just want to keep the top of this piece and I was hoping that this rod would be long enough to screw the top back down to the base of it, but it was not. So I'm just screwing the top all back together and I'm going to use hot glue to attach the two pieces together. Now I want to paint the lantern white. I'm going to be using chalk paint. I'm going to put two good coats of chalk paint on here. And I'm going to be careful not to get too much on the glass, 
but I'm not really concerned with it because it is really easy to clean chalk paint on a, off of a glass using a wet paper towel and a razor blade. And if some of it comes off when I am cleaning it, that is also no big deal because we are going for a distressed look on this piece. I thrifted this paper towel holder and I just loved all the lines and the spindle on it. I knew I would find the perfect project to use this for. I brought the piece outside and sprayed it with white chalk paint using my spray gun. And once it was dry, I distressed it using 220 grit sandpaper and a baby wipe. I definitely wanted to bring out all the details in this spindle. Now I'm gonna take this little hook. I ordered these off of Amazon. They come in black, but this one I had already painted white. You could definitely attach it to your piece ahead of time and spray it with the whole piece. This hook comes with tiny little screws, so you definitely want to pre-drill your holes. So I just marked them with a pencil, and now I'm pre-drilling them before I screw them in using a screwdriver. I am definitely trying to pare down my Christmas decor, so I'm going to take one of my year-round mini eucalyptus leaf wreaths, and I'm going to make it work for Christmas, just simply adding in these red berries. I love just adding in these red berries to all my decor. You can purchase a big pick of them and just pull them apart, and that is exactly what I did. And that is a simple way to turn your year-round decor into something that works for Christmas. And then you don't have to store it. You just simply pull off the red berries after Christmas and you're done. I thrifted this set of birds and I tried to style them in my home as they are, but they are not really going with my style of decor. So we are gonna give them a little makeover. I want them to have a matte flat finish and also give them some texture. So I'm gonna be mixing this antique white latex paint with some baking soda. I normally mix about half baking soda and half latex paint, but if you don't want it that textured, you would just add less baking soda to it. You wanna get your first coat of paint on, let it dry completely, and then put a second coat on it. I also like to use a chip brush when using this paint mixture because that adds even more texture to the piece. I'm gonna seal these birds with a Rust-Oleum clear coat because there's one more thing I want to add to them. I'm gonna cut out a little piece of the IOD traditional pots transfer. The great thing about transfers is that you can use the whole piece or you can just cut out little bits and parts to use on your projects. So I'm just gonna cut out two small parts that I think would look good on the birds. And I'm going to put my image on the chest of the birds. So this little plastic piece that I have, it comes with your transfer and you just rub it over your type or your image and that image will transfer onto your piece. When you think that you are done, you want to very carefully and slowly remove the plastic. That way, if you see any pieces that have not transfer, you can just go back and rub them a little bit more. Now this next step is personal preference, but I like to go back and lightly sand my transfers. I just find that gives it a more worn look and makes it seem like this transfer has always been on the piece. We've been changing out all the light fixtures throughout the house and these globes were on a lot of the lights and I just thought they were so cute and so pretty and just knew I could do something amazing with them. I sprayed two of them white with chalk paint and my plan was to wet distress them, but I think they look so beautiful in white that I'm gonna keep some glass, some white, and then wet distress some of them also. I didn't have any of the materials to try this, but I also thought doing these in a mercury glass look would also look amazing and so high end. Now I'm going to take some jute twine and just wrap it tightly many times around the top. 
Then I hot glued the twine on each side to secure it in place so that I could create a hanger for this piece. These turned out even more beautiful and more high-end than I even could have imagined. You can never have too many little decorative trees around your house. I'm going to do a quick easy DIY to add some more trees into my winter decor. I am just using a piece of a cardboard box, but I need it to be white and I don't want to have to paint it. So I'm just using some spray adhesive to glue on a piece of white paper to the front and the back of the cardboard. Using my ruler, I'm going to measure out some triangles. I want to do three different size trees. I like groupings of three and I also like them to be different sizes. And then I'm going to cut them out with my X-Acto knife. So I am going to be using that to make these cute little winter trees. I sprayed my cardboard tree with the spray adhesive and then I put it on top of the sweater. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now if you have a nice thick chunky sweater, you might not need your cardboard to be white. But since mine is white and a little see-through, it looked better with the white paper attached. I'm going to trim off all the excess just making sure my lines are nice and straight and if your two pieces of fabric are not together you could always hot glue it or spray a little bit more adhesive. I do want my edges to be like a little distressed and fuzzy so I am just taking a block of sandpaper and rubbing the edges of my tree. I took some little spindle cutoffs and I cut a groove in them using my table saw um, to glue my fabric tree into. However, these little trees are so light, I think you could definitely glue them onto something without cutting a groove in it. So I'm just using hot glue to attach my sweater tree to the spindle and to cover that raw edge, I'm just hot gluing a little piece of extra sweater material and this gives it a nice clean look. These were so simple and easy to make and you can definitely embellish them more if you wanted, but I decided to keep mine white and simple so I can keep them out after the Christmas season. Hey guys, I'm just gonna interrupt the video real quick to tell y'all about an amazing sale I have going on on my website right now, November 25th through the 27th. All IOD is 20% off and all of my home decor is currently 30% off. So y'all make sure to go check that out at juliesdesignsandsigns.com. And of course, I will have a link in the description below. I'm sure this is not a new idea, but it's new to me. If you don't know, we just moved and I've never had these Christmas looking holiday trees in my yard before. I love that for free, I can just walk in my backyard and cut off some limbs off these trees. They are beautiful and they smell amazing. So I've just been adding them to some decor I already have in my home just to add that little touch and smell of Christmas. So if you have trees like this as well, I highly suggest cut off a few limbs, take out that greenery that's been in your jar all year round and add this. It actually stays green for a very long time. I think these will be good until Christmas. I wasn't going to put any more ornaments on my tree, but I thrifted these three boxes of gold ornaments for a dollar and I had an idea. So we're going to try it out. Y'all, these were $1.88 from Walmart originally and these were $4.99 from Kmart. Do y'all remember Kmart? I used to love shopping at that store. So I've been adding a lot of antique gold to my decor. So that when I saw these gold ornaments for only a dollar, I thought I could probably antique them. And that way my tree would go a little bit more with the decor in my home. So to antique these, all I'm gonna do is apply the Waverly Antiquing Wax. If you have watched my videos, you know this stuff is like magic and I use it on everything because it just makes everything look amazing. 
I just applied the antiquing wax on the top of these. That way I could hold the bottom. And I did a few of them. That way it would give the antiquing wax just a little bit of time to dry before I just dabbed it off. So I'm going to do all the top of my ornaments, let the top dry, and then I'm going to go back and do the same thing on the bottom half of the ornaments. And I'm only going to apply one layer of antiquing wax. And it's just going to give these kind of bright gold ornaments a more muted aged antique look. I did this on gold ornaments, but I am really interested to see how they would do on colored ornaments. So if you already had some bright colored ornaments that you wanted to give an aged look, I would definitely try the antiquing wax on them. I think it would look absolutely amazing. And y'all, look at the difference between the ornaments on the left with no antiquing wax and the ornaments on the right. Doesn't this look absolutely amazing? They have this beautiful, vintage, old looking patina now. I wanted these ornaments to just be a pretty accent on my tree. So these I decided to hang a little bit more towards the inside of the tree. These came out exactly like I wanted them to and they match perfectly with the anti gold decor that I already have in my home. who get these tea lights from Amazon they are on a timer so they light up for six hours a day and then they go off for 12 hours so every day at four o'clock they come on and they stay lit up until 10 o'clock at night I only ended up putting these three ornaments on my tree that I DIY'd and I absolutely love my tree this year it's so simple but so beautiful I thrifted this sled for a couple of dollars. I really like the shape of it, how it was long and skinny. And I like that it was red. That way when I painted it white and distressed it, that red would come back through. The first thing I need to do is remove all the wooden pieces on top so I have a nice flat surface to work with. I sanded down the top, then brought it outside and painted it with white chalk paint using my sprayer. Even though I sanded down the top, you could still kind of see the glue where those little wooden pieces are. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover that up. I have this piece of five millimeter underlayment and I'm going to just use the sled as a template. I'm going to trace it out and then I'm going to cut it out with my jigsaw. And it fits perfectly on top of my sled. Since I had to cut out a new piece of wood, I just decided to go with the two-tone look, but I definitely want to age this new piece of wood. So I'm gonna be using the Waverly Antiquing Wax and Water Mixture. You just paint it on and let it dry and it makes your brand new wood look old and aged and exactly like I love my wood to look. While my wood is drying, I'm going to finish up the sled. So I want to distress it and bring back some of that red that is underneath the white. So we're going to have white, we're going to have some red, and we're going to have some natural wood tones. It looks like at one point there was a little rod or something right here that is no longer on the piece. So I'm just going to drill a hole through the whole thing and I'm gonna use that pretty red velvet ribbon that I've been using on my other projects to create a hanger for this sled. I also wanna add some Christmas greenery to this piece. So just using three sprigs of greenery, greenery and some jute twine, I'm just going to tie them together and then tie it to the sled. Now I'm going to attach the wooden piece to my sled. I'm using hot glue, but you could also use super glue or wood glue. When I purchased this piece, I thought it would look really good hanging on one of the hooks in my entryway since it is so long and skinny and that's what I really loved about it. So I thought it would be so cute to hang some of my family's Christmas pictures. So I'm going to add three little hooks so I could have these pictures hanging up in my entryway.
For this project, we are gonna be using something that I know everyone has around their house. We are gonna be using cardboard. I'm using the cardboard from this beer box because I like how thin it is. I printed out these vintage postcard images from the graphics fair. I printed it out in two different sizes a normal size postcard and then a smaller one. So I'm simply just going to cut these out. I'm not gonna cut out the individual postcards yet and then I'm going to cut out a piece of the cardboard. I'm gonna be using Mod Podge to attach the paper to the cardboard. I'm actually gonna attach it to the front because I want the natural cardboard to be on the back. And honestly, this has kind of Christmas colors going on. So if a little bit of the color comes through, it's not going to be a big deal. But in the end, you could not see any color coming through. Once my bottom layer of Mod Podge was dry, I put a top coat of Mod Podge. Once the top layer of Mod Podge was dry, I used my corkback ruler and an X-Acto knife to cut it out. I just thought it would be quicker to wait till after everything was glued together to cut out the individual postcards. You could absolutely leave these as is, but I want to give them an aged antique look. So I'm gonna be applying the Waverly Antiquing Wax. I want it thicker around the edges and a little bit lighter in the middle. So I'm gonna apply it to the edges first and then to the entire piece. I'm going to dab off the excess with a dry paper towel and it wasn't coming off as much as I wanted in the middle so I just took a baby wipe and started to dab it with that. And then I went back and added a little bit more antiquing wax around the edges so I just kind of played with it until I got the effect that I wanted. To attach a hanger to my postcards, I drilled a hole in each side. You could just punch a hole or whatever. To me, drilling it was just very easy. And then I had this subscriber send me these twig branches and they ended up being the perfect thing for this because I find they ended up looking like some rusty wire. So thank you so much, Sally, for sending this to me. It definitely came in handy for this project. And I'm simply going to put it through the holes and then twist it around to keep it in place. These came out so great. This is totally my style. And I was thinking this would be a great project for kids. You could have them color a picture before you Mod podge it and turned it into an ornament. One of my favorite things to thrift is vintage kitchen items. I just love using that sort of stuff in my home decor. I was so excited to find these vintage cookie cutters and I thought they would look great just with a piece of baker's twine. So that way I could hang them up anywhere in the house or on a Christmas tree. I just love that it's becoming popular to have a tree in every room in the house and how cute would it be to have a tree in your dining room or in your kitchen just filled with vintage baking items like these vintage cookie cutters maybe some utensils maybe some jello molds i just think that would look so great i'm definitely gonna have to thrift some more kitchen items so i can fill up an entire tree not only do these look great as a collection hanging on a tree but they also look good alone if you have a hook in your kitchen or maybe a knob on a piece of furniture in your dining room just to add a little touch of vintage Christmas character to your space. For this project, we are going to be using three hardback books. I got them in three different sizes, but you could use whatever size that you wanted. I need a white base for this project, so I'm just going to do one quick coat of paint on the hard covers of these books. We're going to be using this sweater to make a book set and what you're going to see mainly on the book set is the spines. So I want to use the same sweater, but I want to try to use the different patterns it has on it and change up each pattern on each of the spines. So what I'm going to concentrate on covering first is the spine and the top of the book and then I'm going to go back and cover the underneath of the book. I do want to cover the entire book because you will, you will be able to see the sides as well. 
I'm folding over and hot gluing the sweater on the inside of the book. You just want to try to cut off as much excess as possible in the corners. That way your book does close and is not too bulky. I did the ends of the spine last. I just cut off any extra fabric that they had and then I high glued the sweater to the edge of the spine and that gave it a nice clean look. And I just repeated this process for each one of the books, trying to give each spine a different pattern. This is how this particular book turned out when I glued the print on the spine like I wanted. And had I thought about it ahead of time, it would have been really cute to do a more wintry book color or even a pattern book color cover and just cover some of the book like this that would have been really cute but the black is not really the look that I'm going for so I'm going to go ahead and cover this up and as you can see if I don't cover it up you can see the size of the book so I did go back and make sure that all my books were completely covered <music> If you have a glass light cover that kind of looks like a dome with an opening at the top, do not throw it away. It makes the perfect cutest cloche. This is actually a finial from a curtain rod that was left here in the house that we purchased. And look how perfectly it fits in here, y'all. <laughs> Never throw these little finials away. You will find something to do with it. The metal finial does have a screw sticking out, so I'm gonna use my metal jigsaw blade and cut it off with my jigsaw. I do like this little variety pack of saw blades because they're all labeled so you know exactly which one you need for each project. And I just put the, the finial in my vise and then cut it off with my jigsaw. And now I'm going to give it a coat of chalk paint and then I'm going to lightly distress it. Once that is done, I'm just going to glue my finial to the glass piece and this will act as a handle so you can easily lift your glass cloche up and down. This turned out to be such a great looking easy project using two random items I had laying around the house. And this is something that you can change out throughout the seasons and leave in your home year around. I removed these red book covers from a book that I had used on a previous project, but I kept them because I thought I could upcycle them around Christmas time. You can sand these vintage fabric book covers for a more distressed look. So I just want to distress the edges a little bit more, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the sandpaper on the entire book because that will really bring out all the texture on this fabric book cover. I'm going to be using the IOD Sprig stamp on this one. This is one of their newer stamps and I absolutely love it. I think you could just change out the colors and you can definitely use it for any season. These are the two sprigs that I decided to use. I do not want it to go all the way to the bottom of my book cover. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of painter's tape to mark it so I know exactly what part of the sprig stamp I want to put on my book cover. I am using white IOD ink. I'm just going to apply the ink to my stamp and then put it on top of the book cover. You just want to lightly push on your stamp and then remove it and it comes out so beautiful and dainty. I love these sprig stamps. I want this to be a hanging piece of artwork. So to add a hanger, I am simply going to drill two holes in the top and then add some jute twine. And then I also wanna add a little bit of Christmas greenery to make this, you know, all the Christmas colors. So I'm going to add two pieces of greenery to this as well. I adore how these came out. They're so sweet and vintage looking and probably why I have such a hard time throwing anything away. I just knew I could come up with something amazing to do with these book covers. For this project, we are gonna be using this wood frame that I purchased from a thrift store for I believe 99 cents. 
You have seen me use draw cloths as backgrounds for artwork or mats for pictures. So I was wondering what it would look like to use a sweater as a background for some winter art. You want to have a white background because your sweater will be see-through and I absolutely love this chunky textured sweater. I just sprayed some spray adhesive onto my mat and then applied the sweater and now I'm just cutting out all the edges. You don't want to turn it over and hot glue it onto the back because then your edges will be too thick and it may not fit back into your frame. So just trim the sweater as close as you can to your backer. I think this print goes perfectly with the texture on the sweater and the natural wood frame, but I don't want to permanently attach it. So I'm just gonna use masking tape and kind of create my own double-sided tape. That way later on, if I wanna take this whole piece apart, nothing is permanently attached. For this project, we are going to be using a wood spindle that I believe I cut down from a chair leg. And we're also going to be using this frilly glass globe light fixture. I think for this project, the more detail and the more frilly the glass cover, the better. This wooden spindle fits perfectly in the hole of the glass cover. So I'm just going to be using hot glue to just get it straight. And then for permanent adhesion on the underneath, I'm going to put Gorilla Glue Clear Grip and I'm going to let it dry overnight. Once the glue is dry, I am going to paint the entire piece with white chalk paint. This is personal preference. I do really love the wood color on the spindle, but I just think painting the whole thing the same color will just bring it all together. Once my chalk paint was dry, I just wanted to go back and lightly distress some of the natural wood back in the spindle at the top. I did not distress the glass light fixture. I kind of forgot about this part until I went back and looked at the picture and saw that it had some little beads as the little, you know, part that rings the bell and makes the noise. This is going to be purely decorative, of course. And had I thought about it beforehand, I would have attached it to the spindle with a stapler, but now I can't get a stapler inside of the bell. So what I'm going to do is take some twine and take some of these beads that I got from this nine foot garland, y'all. It was $6 at Walmart during Christmas time. I hope y'all picked up one of these as well. So I strung a few beads on this and then I'm going to tie a little knot at the end of the twine and then add some hot glue and then attach that little knot to my spindle. So as you can see, I could have stapled it from the beginning had I thought about it. But the hot glue ended up working out just fine. For this project, I am going to be using fence boards. I have two fence boards already cut down, one at two feet and one at 15 inches. I just found something round in my shop that was the size that I wanted. And with my pencil, I'm going to be tracing my outline on the wood and then I'm going to cut it out with my jigsaw. Once I had one side cut out with a jigsaw, I took it and traced it on the other side. That way both sides would be as even as possible. But if not, it's okay. We're going for a handmade rustic look here. Once your angel is cut out, you can use your orbital sander to smooth out the wood and fix any imperfections that you might have from the jigsaw. Now I need to make some wings for my angel. I'm going to keep these very simple. This fence board is about three and a half inches wide and I'm making it about a foot long and I'm just going to draw kind of like a semicircle, just a very simple design that is going to be easy to cut out. My angels are going to be very tall and I want them to be able to stand up straight even after I attach the wings. So I am going to be putting just a small piece of wood on the back that's going to help keep them stable and stand up on their own. I want my angels to have a two-tone look. So 
on the body of the angel, I am going to be adding the antiquing wax watered down mixture to give them a natural brown color. And then on the wings, I'm going to be painting them white and distressing them. I want to make a halo for my angel. I don't have any thick wire, so I found this wire hanger in my house, and that's what I'm going to use. Now, I want to tell y'all it was definitely very difficult to work with, so I think just some thicker wire off of a spool would be a lot easier than this, but I was able to get it in the shape that I wanted. So in the end, it did work out. But I just wanted to let y'all know that it was a very difficult wire to work with. So if you have something else, I would definitely suggest trying that over a wire hanger. Once all my wood is dry, I am ready to put all the pieces of this angel together. So I'm just going to attach the wings to the back of the angel using my brad nailer. And then I'm going to drill a hole at the top of the angel and just glue in my little wire halo. You can get as fancy as you want with this and paint your angel in different ways, but I absolutely love the two-tone look of this angel and the simplicity of the design. Alright guys, well I hope that y'all enjoyed today's video and that it gave you lots of ideas and inspiration. Definitely leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought what was your favorite project. Also, if you are loving everything you see behind me and you have not seen my master bedroom refresh for Christmas, definitely check that out. I will have it linked below and also right here, I will post a playlist of all my Christmas DIYs in case you want even more ideas. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope y'all were inspired. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all in the next video.